Luna, Tide, Weaver kind of imply a ball up strategy. But then Abaddon's going even more in on this. I feel having a stun from your support duo could be nice so that if things start to go wrong, then at least you can win skirmishes as opposed to winning a push. Mm -hmm. They have tons of sustain. They have a great way to stay in front of an objective. But whenever your team isn't as four or five heroes, where are you getting kills from? But that's the beauty of these five-man lineups. You don't really need to play for the kills, yeah. right? You play for the objectives. I am I'm quite particularly fond of this Abaddon just for like the obvious counter reason and just for this concept of what he can provide by way of like towers and by way of just backing up the carry. But you make a very good point, Tsunami. I think that they have to correct it with their mid pick here. They need somebody who can set up for these kills, like Tsunami is saying. Any kind of sun, any kind of spirit hero. Unfortunately, they've already banned out the storm, so Secret have that same kind of read. Um, I want to touch up a little bit on the troll. I fiended Nisha's Dota buff a little bit, and he actually has been playing a lot of Troll Warlord. Really? So, yeah, I know a lot of people are not fond of this hero, but the secret seem to see something in it, and I'm excited to see what we have in store here. Troll's obviously incredibly strong on lane, right? Axes are a very powerful tool in securing range creeps and in harassing out the enemy. Also, the slow potential with Bane can maybe result in a couple of kills. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes with this troll pick. I think Alliance do need to pick something that can build a Yules. Because okay. when you think of troll, he needs to be kited, right? You have to yeah. Yules him when he turns on his ulti. And so far, Tide's not going to build it. Luna's definitely not building it. Abaddon's not going to have gold, and Weaver, under no circumstances, wants to buy Yule. Is OD still on the table? We have seen a little bit of OD, I believe, during the week. Uh, it's not really a hero that is particular in anybody's favor right now, but it does come to mind when you're playing against a troll. Yeah. I and mean, that's actually a very interesting idea, right? Because you can just... Interesting? Yeah. <laughs> that's all I no, not You propose a... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, it's not bad, right? Because... You can you can astral the troll and that's the way to deal with him. Yeah. You also have a baton to protect you from any grips. And Sanity's Eclipse is incredibly effective against one of the or the lowest int gain hero in the game with Troll Warlord. So I would be on board with it. If it was ye old alliance, mm. I'd be like, oh, clearly this is a limp DK situation. I'm just not very keen. Fair. I'm not very keen on OD as a hero. I don't think honest. anybody I'm, is I'm not at the moment. particularly fond of him. I think perhaps they could go for a Wex Invoker too. I know that's a Invoker Am I blind? Yeah, oh, they banned snap? out uh, Shadow Fiend Invoker and Lena and now Batrider as you're, well. You're right, you're right. My eyes don't work. Well, that's, all good. that's down the drain. They can't take that Wex Invoker and just tornado the troll. Still got Void Spirit, Yule's Builder. That's true. Mobile enough. You can always go for a Viper, you can kite him around. I need stuns, Shiver. Why? No, mm, yeah. I need hard I mean, then disables. then go for the DK. <laughs> yeah, I'm Five telling man. you, like, it, it honestly goes in vein of their, yeah. let's group up in front of a tower. You're you can't do anything right. about this. They got a lot of time to think about this pick as mm -hmm. well. So these Tinker and Bat bands make a lot of sense for Seeger. They, they don't want something that can play into this tempo. They don't want something that can also sit back and farm because they do plan on taking it a little bit later with their troll pick themselves. The and there is the Void Spirit. So um, of the Spirit heroes remaining in the pool, you've got Ember and Void, but Void is just better for the ability to build duels, yeah. like Tsunami mentioned. You really do need to use this troll. This troll hero can be so strong, but if you just kite it, it feels like it doesn't do anything, right? So they, they pick that up. Honestly, it's very solid. This alliance draft looks really good. It looks a lot better than the last one too. It doesn't feel greedy. It feels very well-rounded. It has team fight. It has strong lanes. It has Roche presence. It has the ability to engage fights on Void Spirit and disengage on his choice. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. I mean, it's it's not on the team that I was expecting it on, but I'll take it, okay? Huh. I'll take credit for that one, uh, but the OD coming out for Samael. Okay, I mean, it gives him a more team fight. Was Leshrac banned? Nope. Okay, so actually, uh, OD Meteor Hammer build could be good here because the only disrupts they have for it are Aether Remnant, but let's assume Void Spirit is the one Astraled, and um, Lucent Beam. And of course, Ravage, but that's not really going to happen during yeah. <laughs> during the, the early mid game. But yeah, when the two supports, like Abaddon and Weaver, don't have any stuns, OD can be a very good hero, especially the Meteor Hammer build. Can do a lot of tower damage, good stats early on, and can get kills around the map early rotations too. So it definitely can work. I just don't know what it is doing 
that like a Leshrac couldn't do, <laughs> or or even an Ember Spirit if they wanted something like that. It, it I guess, is more team fight oriented, which yeah. could be good. I mean, there are no high end heroes, right? It can definitely do a lot of damage later on yeah. and outside of the Void Spirit. The other four heroes, OD does very well against, so well, it could I work. I believe uh, Tsunami's face tells me that he thinks okay. there's going to be a game three. I, 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 did, I didn't go that far, all right. Uh, what? I was <laughs> skeptical about the last pick, but... Oh, well, actually... No, yeah, I think there will be a game three. All right, I, all right, I, all right. The Void Spirit repaired my issues that I had with Alliance's draft, which was a lack of disable mm -hmm. and a lack of skirmish capabilities between you grouping up in front of a tower. Um, the only thing that concerns me is that I feel the supports may not have much to do. Once the Weaver tight under lane dismantles, I don't know what Weaver's job is, stacking Ancients for the Luna maybe, but I'll give it to Alliance for this game number two. I think OD can work here. Honestly, like you can Astral the Tides, they don't have to deal with him for those four seconds because they don't really have a means to like static storm him mm -hmm. or doom him or something like that. Uh, he's gonna do fine on lane. It's just a matter of, Will this hero work or not? Because we've seen it work and we've seen it suck. So I think it could go for either team this game. It could go either way. On you. We're going to find out which way it will go, though, together with our commentary team. It's Moxie. I'm still talking, but sure. oh, there you go. Surprise! It's us! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeez. We heard it. We heard the Thank toss. You. But uh, yeah, you know, it seems like there's a lot of divided. Uh, Opinions going on about this OD here, Sundaran, mm -hmm. and I'm really curious, what do you think about this this hero in this particular draft lineup? Uh, I think it's pretty good this game. Um, the Meteor Hammer build is probably the way to go, and it also looks like that's what Sumail is eyeing up here. He already has the crown triple branch, so goes to lane with a ton of stats. Um, I think part of what guided Secret to pick this hero is that it's a reliable way for them to kill Tide, and I think that's a problem that their lineup has. Troll doesn't do a particularly good job at killing Tide, it takes a very long time, he loses his damage from Anchor Smash. Uh, it's a hero that deals a ton of damage in Arena, um, and it's a hero that has overwhelming bursts, which makes it harder for the save heroes of Alliance to get their saves in, and I say heroes because usually the Weaver position four will go for an Axe eventually. Uh, saving against Heavy Burst is just inherently going to be way harder than saving against high consistent damage, right? Because then you can kind of predict when things are happening. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a bonus thing for OD as well is its, uh, it's ability to kind of negate a Photic Shield as well. Like if a hero gets clutch safe with a Photic Shield, you banish them and then you hammer them after. Okay. Uh, and then there's no shield again. So, you know, there's like, there's different plays. The lane matchup is good. That's the obvious part here, is that he performs very well against Void Spirit. So, well, let's uh, let's see how it goes. I'm curious. Uh, I love the hero. I actually think Odie is very fun to watch and play. So it's a welcome change for me that this hero is seeing a little bit of light after quite a long time with limited play. Yeah, it feels like he hasn't really shown up quite a bit, but is creeping up more and more recently. I know when I had the discussion with Mira, she mentioned the fact that the aura getting changed a little bit is also making people reconsider the hero. But why do you think they opted for this specifically uh, over like that Lushrak? Because we have seen Samael do such a great job with that hero in the past. I think the primary thing is still the the ability to kill the tanky and saves, right? Okay. Kill the tanky tide, deal with the saves. And also, like, having a save of your own is never bad. You're playing against an alliance lineup that realistically only has one catch, which is the Void Spirit combo, and you can negate that one, right? right. You wait until the Remnant hits, and then you can just Astral the target, and then they can play after. So, yeah, I, I, think, I think it's solid. Uh, was it the best available here in the pool? Maybe. Uh, I w won't say that for sure, but I definitely see the upsides. Uh, more than I see the downsides this game. That's fair. Definitely fair. You're never sure what exactly is going to come out from these teams, what plans that they have in place, so we can only speculate. And so Mail is hitting real hard into Supreme in that mid lane. Going for the 1-1 one, 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 one build here. And like you said, with that increase of chance on Essence Flux, or rather the increase on mana, the chance is always 30%, but mm. uh, getting that much higher mana restore is actually a huge deal for this hero in lane. Uh, just way more consistent damage. Yeah, I, th I think Samael might actually end up destroying this lane once he gets the hammer. I I'm not sure what Void Spirit really does about it. Uh, OD can get the hammer incredibly early if it has a good start. And Samael looks to be doing very well on the CS. Yeah, I think the only problem, too, when you take a look at 
you know, you mentioned getting this meteor hammer and getting it fairly early. You don't really have the heroes over on the side of Alliance to really gank this OD, right? Right. You don't have a kind of rotational hero that's going to delay it. And that's a little bit scary, I think. Yeah, when your one catch hero that needs to set the tempo of the game is placed in an unfavorable matchup and only has defensive help, that is often uh, going to result in a lot of fires to put out around the map, right? And it is... The general consensus in Dota is that it's easier to play active than reactive. There are certain heroes in certain situations where playing reactive is favorable, but for the most part, it is easier to make the move than to protect against it. Right. Um, and that's where Secret definitely have the upper hand. Like, we've talked a lot about this mid lane, but if you look around the other lanes, right, you have Rubik and Bane supports that can make moves. You have the Mars to set up things. For Alliance, a lot of it is about, can we group up, go somewhere, and when they fight into us, we counterplay them really well? Um, and that's where, again, for me, the OD really uh, can bring it all together. So. Yeah, I know a lot of teams have been favoring the Tidehunter pickup specifically just because it does force them to kind of respond to you when you're moving around the map or if, you know, you get very tanky up to the top lane, uh, you do eventually have to go and address it. And if you don't address it, you have, you know, this huge issue later on when you're going to push towers. Yeah, I, I think an OD with hammer and levels can solo Tide relatively quickly, actually. Um, maybe maybe you don't fully solo him. Maybe you need one assistant for the kill. But considering what we usually see tides get away with, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, so what are we looking at? So bottom lane, Alliance, a bad and Luna lane, obviously a classic, very strong lane that was favored, especially by Tundra. Uh, they started playing this a lot a couple of months ago before TI uh, in the tournament that they actually won. I forgot which one that was. Pardon me. But... Um, when Tundra really made a, a big name for themselves and a lot of t people were like, it's a shame they aren't playing at TI because they're looking really hot right now. And they were, but unfortunately they didn't peak for TI qualifiers. Uh, but they played damn well in that tournament. Um, and in the top lane, obviously Weaver Tide. I think this hero pairing is really powerful right now uh, in general. Uh, but maybe Alliance going a little bit too much in the same direction here with uh, considering that they didn't have the last pick mid. And man, Supreme is just getting Handled. 13 for 1 against 26 for 10. Samael will get the hammer in two creep waves. So Supreme should not be level 6 at that point. And even if he is, none of Void Spirit's casts are truly instant. Like, there's a little bit of a wind-up. Mm -hmm. So if you're a very adept OD player and you line up your spell as well, uh, you will hit that hammer and still kill him. I would say Samael probably qualifies underneath that particular label there. But it, it, it is problematic, right? Because Supreme, he is forced out. I believe this is the second time where he's just getting too low and he's going to have to back away. The recovery, I'm guessing, you know, it has to be something where he hits that level six and tries to go and, and perform ganks. But how is that going to happen when he isn't going to have any assistance here in this, this middle lane? Do you rely on a, a rune of opportunity or...? Yeah, and how do you get that rune? Um, <laughs> that is the other question. Yes. I mean, it, when you're level six, it's easy to get it, right? But until then, Samel is just constantly, constantly on the case here, just pressuring, trading. He's gonna keep stealing the int here, or mana rather. And the hammer is coming in now. So that's scary. Samel opted to not skill ult on level six. I thought he was actually going to go for that and try for a kill combination here once the hammer arrives, mm. but it's just playing it safe. Actually, Supreme will get six now, so not too bad. There's the hammer. Oh, there though. it is, the setup coming in like we talked about. Oh, Samel may be adept, but he missed time bet by a good half second almost. He got too excited. He's like, <laughs> man, look at the timing on this, uh, this meteor hammer. I'm going to show it off. I don't know what surprised him about that. I don't think there's been any changes to duration for either of these abilities, but you need to, when you do that banish, if it's on a hero with status resistance, you need to cast it instantly, right. but when it isn't, uh, you need to wait just a little bit of time there between the astral and the hammer. But I mean, he's this one might land. There we go. There it is. There's the land that we were looking for. But uh, there is no assistance this time around, so Supreme, he's going to take a decent amount of, of hurt there, but it's not going to be too concerned. It's insane how much damage that combo deals, right? Yeah. It's like 600, and it's at... What's the cooldown of it? Like, what's the, what's the hammer cooldown? 24. So every 24 seconds you can do this. The Voice Spirit can't do anything about it if he comes for CS. And at the same time, he's losing max mana, right? Yes. So... This is going to be a big problem. On, it says minus 700. Surely that can't be right. We have the rotation now. Yaps are making his way over. Aramis, though, trying to put out a little damage, but ooh, nice dodge away from Supreme. 
Yeah. It's very close there. He, he gets saved by Hanskin and the Aphotic Shield there, but keep in mind, you're placing three Alliance heroes mid here just so Void Spirit doesn't die. Like, he's not thriving, he's just staying alive. And he still has to go back to base. It's the third time now that he's forced back. Yeah, and I, I know we're focusing a lot on the mid lane, but it's because the other lanes are kind of playing themselves, right? Like, Troll is just farming up here with the help of Bane. It's super easy, especially when B Weaver leaves the lane to go mid. And bottom lane, Mars, he's going to be getting his against the Luna Baden. It's not a very offensive lane. It's very strong when it comes to trading, but they don't have, like, true kill potential, right? So Ice is just finding creeps. And that means, you know what? Can't believe it, but eight minutes, no kill. Just kidding. There Seven minutes, is. 54, <laughs> no kill. There it is. They were like, I bet Cinderin's going to say that. Let's prove him wrong. <laughs> They but finally found it. And Alliance? it's going to be Supreme. He needed that. He needed that very desperately. He honestly. needed that badly. He got, okay, think about this for a second. He got first blood in mid, and he's still over a thousand net worth behind the OD. Minute eight. All right, that's. That's a consolation prize, right? It now, is. At this point. You yes. still don't feel very good about it, no. but at least you got something. And sometimes you just need something. Smell is a level and a half ahead as well. Uh, curious to see what they're going to do about this now, Secret, though, because their supports, you do want to find levels on Rubik and Bane, right? They're both mm -hmm. level 3 minute 830, which is very low levels. Uh, usually one of the supports at this point is level 5, so that the other one can take the tome and you both hit level 6 around minute 10. Um, wonder what they're going to do. This smoke rotation did not bear any fruit. Uh, Nico Baby escaped there, and obviously night vision from Lunar Blessing helps make him feel very safe. Once that smoke breaks, he knows exactly what's happening, and he's just going to leave, go to farm some jungle, and maybe Samel is just going to be like, you know what, I'm just going to go hammer the tower to at least make this rotation do something. That they are still hoping doing. to find someone here. All right, Hanskin might bite. No, Samel is showing now. There's no way Hanskin walks they into this. They are smoked up though, over on the side of Alliance. It looks like they're going to try to hunt and see if they can find this troll over here in these woods. But bottom lane, Hanskin was trying to soak, and it's just like you said. They're hunting for Hanskin. He's just going to boogie out, and Samael will continue to hit the tower along with the rest of the team. They're making plays over on Tanisha. Couple of hits in here. He's going to go into that frenzy. Just get the bug off. We'll be able to hold on to Aramis a little bit longer, but eventually. Ooh, ooh the brain sap coming out from Puppy will ensure that Aramis will fall. Following up with the nightmare on Supreme. And Samael has already made his rotation. He's got to time this just that might right be too early. Here. Might be a little bit off the mark. Yes, he is. And. Supreme will live to fight another day. A little bit of a tip for you guys at home when you have level 4 Astral Imprisonment. The hammer needs to come when the bar on top is over the H Eight. in mm -hmm. Banished. And, yeah, okay, so I do want to cut Samael some slack here, though, because it's easier said than done against heroes with really short cast points, right? Like, he needs to hit this within a probably 0 0.2 second window. Uh, it's very easy if you're doing it against a troll warlord, right? Like, what's he going to do when he comes out of Banish? He's right. not going to randomly just blink away, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but against some heroes like Void Spirit, it needs to be pretty clutch and did miss the timing by a little bit there. Unfortunately for him, I think that would have actually been a kill um, because then he could have cast his ulti out of the hammer and had the full burst combo, but didn't get it done that time around. Puppy is in a lot of trouble. He's trying to bait a little bit, it feels like. Oh, he's going to teleport away. Just TP out. There's no Void Spirit. Who are you going to stun with? Nightmare to Tide and see ya. That's three heroes that just were congregating right around that area. He's making a lot of time. And I do think, so again, let's address again, this is a very slow game uh, in terms of kill action. It's not like the teams aren't putting pressure. I think Samael has played very aggressively this game with his zero kills. Kind of ironic, right? <laughs> but he has actually been destroying without killing anyone. He's just been constantly pressuring. He's been dealing damage to the bottom tower. He ran Supreme out of lane, so he's done an excellent job without finding a kill. Uh, just overall game trajectory, I think Secret should be pretty happy right now. Um, not just because they're K ahead, but the way their lineup scales too. Like OD Troll together with Mars, really fearsome tricore later in the game, especially when BKB start dropping lower, OD can take over games entirely. Um, and as we've already covered, good core matchups, right? Right. He's I, eventually he's probably going to force Leslau to buy a BKB on Tide because he can kill him so fast, and that that feels bad on Tide to have to do that. So. When's the last time you had a game with two kills minute twelve? Um, 
Including your pub games, including any game you've cast. When's the last time you saw oh God, that? I, I don't like know. It's ages ago. It's definitely me. happened for sure. I think in some of the uh, some of the Eastern Europe games during DPC, I think they were very very slow at the start because I remember making the comment. Leading into TI or this week? Leading into TI. Right. The the past uh, the past season. But I remember being like, wow, you know, this used to be the region that was known for, you know, like nonstop mm -hmm. fighting, like constant aggression. And everyone was very measured um, and very, very patient while they were farming. So probably that was the last time. It's quiet, though, for sure. I will say, though, that's a good point. Like, that's actually maybe in many ways the region that has changed their stereotypical playstyle the most over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Because I think CIS as a region realized that they were being too relentless in their gameplay uh, overall. And then we started seeing more calculated CIS teams get a lot of success, like the old Virtus Pro that started winning majors or getting top finishes. Uh, we saw, obviously, Spirit of this TI, very inspirational, right? Uh, which wasn't just all about the bull rushing, but about taking risks when it matters and when it makes sense and playing around timings much better uh, has been a huge improvement for that region. Um, and honestly, it's been similar to what we've seen as of late out of uh, South America as well, which I feel like you go back two or three years and they were kind of mimicking the CIS playstyle and have also kind of, I don't know if you want to call it Tame the Beast or whatever. We call it the, the Wild West or uh, yeah. the Twilight Zone when you go into South America because it's not just, you know, the play style that's different. It was that the hero choices were Yeah, they were playing totally, totally different heroes, too. But, like, that's the thing, right? It's normalized it's, a bit more. Yeah, but when you're in an area that's so secluded, you know, it, yep. it makes sense that you're going to see completely yep, so different picks. Trying to stay alive oh, here. Oh, look go for the Ravage. We'll connect, but, of course, is putting the Astral by some mail. That feels... Really bad if you're Les Lau. Yeah. I, I'll tell you that. Like, he uses Ravage on a support, doesn't get the kill, and now he's probably going to die as well. He's dead. No banish? Or no hammer? Okay. No, he already he just used it. He didn't use hammer. Oh, he didn't. Oh. Uh, okay. All right. Maybe he thought he was too late, or maybe he was worried about Kraken Shell. Well, now he can hammer. Now he's definitely going to go. Not going to miss on yep. that one. Connect. They'll get a steal. That pure lead. damage. Like he said, it took a little bit, but he is dead. Got to the finish line. And across it, importantly. Mid lane, Nico Baby trying to put a little bit of pressure. Actually, force out the glyph here. I think Secret pulled the trigger on that a little bit too early. Nisha was there. Uh, so a bit of a maybe miscommunication mistake. Not the end of the world, though. You're going to see the Ravage here. So Samael does get the... I think he was aiming to get the Astral off before the Ravage was cast, or obviously could have just saved Yapsor, but in the end, this actually turns out to be better than if he would have banished the Rubik, as they do get the chase down kill. Puppy? Playing very upfront here, but... I mean, I feel like he's... He knows there's no threat of the Ravage anymore. And he needs to be a bit of a wall between the heroes and the tower to try to delay this push at least. And is being somewhat successful. Swarm connecting, jump forward here from Supreme. They'll go and get the taunt off, but they don't want to dive too hard on this tower. Decent amount of damage. Can they finish it off? Yes, oh, they, they stole will. The they ravage. stole the ravage. They turn back around. They get a kill on Nico, baby. And they'll wait a moment for Hanskin to get out of that ultimate. He's dead too. So yep. <laughs> You're not letting me build any <laughs> any sort of suspense here, dude. You're just like I don't think dead. there was a lot he's of suspense dead. in that he's one. He's dead. Uh, he's dead. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. I wasn't sure. Ooh. The uh, interesting <laughs> thing was what was going to kill him, though. You never knew if it was going to be the spear or the next attack from OD, but they do get it on Mars. Yeah, Secret are honestly just owning them right now. It's it's uh I don't think Alliance knew that Ravage was stolen. Making that play call. I mean, I, I wasn't aware of it either. That was a, a, sci a byproduct of Sumail's banished top lane, right? Mm -hmm. With the Astral was that uh, Yapsor got to come out and spell steal the Ravage. They seemed completely unaware that this was a possibility. And they just get cleaned up for it. Four kills as well as the Roche going the way of Secret. And this is looking to be... No, the panel liked uh, Alliance's draft better in this game than the last one. At least parts of them. Um, gotta, gotta make it count sometime soon here. The OD pick has really, more than anything, some mail has really set the tone for this. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just because of what he has done, it's because of what Supreme hasn't been able to do, right? That's the double impact that Samael has had, is that he enabled himself and disabled the opponent at the same time. Yeah, the big fight breaking out, and it's going to be Supreme who will fall here, Hanskin. Oh, they're throwing out the high fives to boot, as they'll wait patiently, and do you think he's dead this time? No, he's fine. You think so? He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, glad you asked that time. 
<laughs> Let's Gradual help. improvement. Next time I'll be quiet, and then you can answer your own question. <sighs> oh, good jukes from Leslo. I can't seem to find him here. Yep, he's gonna get out. Nicely done. Actually did need to take more or less this exact path. If he would have taken another one, he would have been cut off by Isis Isis Spear there, or been found by the troll, and any connection would have led to the kill, but... Um, looking to be an absolute trashing from Secret in this game. Um, the problem when your alliances line up here, it's not like games can't be won mm -hmm. from this position, but when you look at the way their lineup works, this is around the time that they want to group up and get something done. Mm -hmm. And because they're so far behind, they are not really favored in the team fights anymore. Playing into an Aegis troll, a massively strong OD, Mars has his key items. It's um it's tough. Like your your kill potential as alliances lineup is very much team fight centric. You don't have single target burst that's worth writing home about, right? And even right. if you did, you could get saved by OD or Nightmare. And we we could be looking at a at a pretty quick game here, Moxie. I don't I don't know what alliance are gonna do to try to solve this, but they need to find a solution pretty soon. I feel or they're like they're just gonna get rexed. It's so many pieces that have to fit together exactly correctly, right? Because you do have the threat of this Ravage, but they have an Aegis. They've got saves coming out from the side of Secret. It just makes it very, very difficult for Alliance to even approach here, it feels like. And then with the double damage over on Samael, too, this is looking a lot spookier. It's just gone. 18-minute barracks. They didn't even try to defend. How could they? Yeah, I... That... I don't know much about Dota, Moxie, but I think this is a bad sign if you lose Elena Barracks 18 minutes in without casting a spell to defend it. That that's probably not that's probably not the sign of a team that's coming back and winning the game. I mean never say never, right? It is Dota. Never say never. Things can happen. But But it looks very difficult. Absolutely. You need to defend the next lane then, because you didn't outlast the Aegis this way. Nisha can get to the next tier three and barracks within this two minute span. So if you're ultimately gonna have to defend the next lane then you might as well have tried to defend the first one unless you're hitting some crucial item timing that was worth losing a lane for. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it's coming right now. No, this BKB is still a ways off here for Nico Baby. It's and that's 400 very, away. Very maybe important. they feel like they can hold for it. Actually, okay, maybe Secret don't finish off mid. You know what? I might have to eat my words on this one. They did. This time they did show up with some spells to defend. And they do hold. So, okay. That will be a BKB for Luna completed in 400 gold. We'll use the arena for now over on Hanskin. Okay. He's going to teleport away. I think it's too much damage, though. Yeah. <laughs> nice item against the Baden, Brigant's Blade. Um, you get him low on health, and that's when his invulnerability starts. Then you wait it out, and then you hit that extra bit hard to finish off the kill. We'll be swapping it over for an Essence Ring now to get some Mana Region going. Um, and now the mid tower will fall. And Nisha will take care of this. 50 seconds left on the Aegis. I don't know if Secret fancy their chances of going high ground here with the Siege Creep wave that's coming mid. Uh, it is kind of a narrow window on the Aegis. Once that connects, it's like 30 seconds left. So maybe they just count their victories and back off. I mean, they're getting some nice pickoffs here. As yep. They found themselves a Weaver. It's very easy for them to just walk forward and uh, get rid of them. They pick up the Shikuchi over on the Rubik, which is also just a great spell for this hero. Not as flashy as the Ravage, but... It's very stable. Very it's one, uh, th the reason you love picking Rubik against Weaver is traditionally because of Shikuchi, but uh, now that a lot of more support Weaver is becoming prominent, stealing the Swarm is also really good. Like, the spell level 4 has huge teamfight impact. It's very easy to cast as Rubik and just steal something else uh, and have that in the fight. So, well, what do we got for Alliance? Trying to see the progress here. So they up. get the BKB for Luna. Uh, Supreme was eyeing the Boots of Travel, but he gave up on that idea because the timing is probably like five to six, seven minutes off mm -hmm. of when he would want it. Uh, so he's changing it up to try to get a teamfight impact item. I think if he bought Travels right now, they would basically be like wear waving the white flag. It's like, we can't fight you ever. I'm going to dodge. Mm -hmm. And then you're assuming that you can hold against a lineup that will guaranteed push your base with second row. So. This is not good for Nico, baby. Got the BKB uh, up, at the BKB up, but Puppy's nearby too. I want to try to make something up. They're just going to back off. Arena's down. That's a BKB used from Nico, baby. Yep. BKB used from uh, Ice Ice as well, at the very least for Alliance, but I think the Luna one is way more important. Especially if Secret were to try to make a move sometime soon. Uh, the Mars can easily frontline without his BKB. He can get saved by Nightmare and by the Astral Imprisonment. The Luna, however, yeah, you have the save from a bad end, but 
It doesn't really feel like you're necessarily going to stay alive. Oh, they get the combo off on Supreme and will back off. I'm going to try to make some moves, though. They do have the rest of the team standing nearby. Yules gets tossed down. They'll get the remnant. Nisha, though, waiting patiently. There's no BKB for this Luna. Nico, baby, is going to get saved up for a little while longer. Thanks. That's going to oh. oh, the hammer. Oh, my goodness. They just eradicate Supreme, Nico, baby, and Aramis and Hanskin now left behind. They're just not even going to cool look at Cool guys don't even look at banishes. Exactly. Exactly. Our observer is not a cool guy, so I had to check. But <laughs> rude. Two in one confirmation there. Um, Radiance top tower has fallen. Yeah, GG. That was uh, definitely a shellacking, as the boys would say. Yeah, Samil looking thrilled with himself. <laughs> a little bit of a smile there. I'm sure he had a fun time playing Odie. I think that Samil, not the, he's not the most animated guy. Just a little bit of a smile there is, uh, is enough to know that he feels good about himself. I mean, Nisha was doing a little bit of a dance back there. Did I don't know. That? To me, it looked like he was like dunking Alliance. It was like a yeah, probably. But, but not like a like a basketball through a hoop, but more like a donut into a cup of coffee. It was like a very little dunk, but still a dunk. That is oddly specific that we're going with a coffee into a dunk of coffee, or rather donut into a cup of coffee. Yep. But uh, yeah, it was, you know, we looked at that OD pick. We weren't 100% sure. Our panel wasn't sure. Um, but, I liked yeah, it. And it end, worked? Yeah, it did indeed end up working. And uh, unfortunately for Alliance, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board. But we're going to toss it over to our panel and uh, see who's going to be gloating. Hey, it's me, because I called that OD pick totally for the right team. Absolutely. Uh, but I think the, the people that are gloating in this team, Secret, they they learned something about Alliance in between game one and game two, or during game one. They applied it, and that game was very one-sided. We're going to explain to you exactly why it happened the way it happened after this.